Cage Warriors has got the 155 belt on the line in Liverpool. We have Paddy Pimlet taking on a man with me right now. Soren back. So thank you for joining me. And what a what a fight this is going to be. This is an exciting, exciting time for you, my friend. It sure is, yeah. So let's talk about your run. You know, your free fight win streak in Cage Warriors. You, you kicked off with uh, Scott Cleese. Uh, you know, you, you came on the scene. And you just took off from there. But the thing was, I think the Jacobson fight was your kind of coming out party. Because I was like, right, Jacobson's a striking guy. Okay, I know Sorenbach is a ninja on the ground. This is classic. Kind of, and then you just lit him up. Like, I know you stopped yeah. the fight with a submission. But you, you kind of let out a bit more of what you've got in there. Obviously, you're holding back a little bit, it seems. You've been hiding away some of the weapons that you possess. Was that the kind of fight you just... That just brought out the striking or you just kind of it was just the kind of in the moment well actually I think uh, Jagerson he forced me to, to kind of uh, use more of the stuff that I know because he w he actually surprised me with a really strong uh, wrestling base every time he was against the cage he was just so strong in the clinch so, where I usually just manhandle people and take them to the ground and do my magic uh, I, I kind of had to soften him up before I can do that Nice. Uh, also, we had we had a couple of a couple of small injuries, so my my uh, wrestling wasn't really on point. But uh, we did a lot of stand up and clinch work, and it paid off. It did. It did indeed. Uh, so these little niggles that you had, they're, they're they're gone now. Everything's kind of the re everything's rehabilitated, and you're all systems all yeah. systems firing now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it was really the small things. It was like. Uh, I had a sprained toe and uh, I had another toe where mm. I hit uh, an elbow in sparring, so <sighs> it had to get some stitches. But yeah, so it's just small annoying things that like when you train for the fight and, and you can't really be on your toes, you, you can't really shoot as well. So I don't know. It's, uh, your time is off, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and I could see that in the fight as well, that my shoot wasn't really as low as it should have been. So. Uh, it made it easier to defend the takedowns. Yeah, it does. It makes it, people don't have not grappled. They don't realize the difference it makes. It, it's it, even a half a second. You know that gets him to get his hips in or helps him get that underhook or anything like that. And it just all, all of a sudden your power just is gone. It's exasperating. The last thing you want to do is yeah, exactly. Yeah, gas yourself out with a with a wasted takedown attempt. Uh, so look the. The promo for Cage Warriors that they've done for this fight, I thought it was fantastic. They put a great effort into it. I yeah. loved what they did, mate. I, I yeah, thought it was yeah. brilliant. <laughs> but you got to spend a bit of time, a little bit of time with Paddy. You know, you did the interview as well with Nick. and uh, So, obviously, I imagine the whole time there isn't co constant hostilities. I, you must have talked to each other as human beings, or was it constantly a bit of tension? Yeah, no. Uh, I was kind of surprised. I was thinking he might be a little bit uh, like better and uh, have a negative attitude, but there was nothing of the sort. Uh, he was a really cool guy, really. Uh, and also we did the head-to-head -head interview and people were like expecting us to, he'll have to hold them apart. And, like We're just complimenting each other's games because <laughs> we, we can appreciate what, we, what we're both good at. So. Well, that, I think that's um, what sells yeah, the point. Liverpool was amazing. Yeah. yeah that That's... That, that's the people we are, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that not everybody wants to see, like, the, the grudge match every time. We've got to fight it out in the cage, but don't have to be, like, petty mean to each other in, in everyday life. No, no, you don't. And like I said, your performances and his performances, they talk for themselves. You know, the, the smack talk doesn't need to happen. You don't need that friction. The fight alone... The, like when this was announced there was a huge hype uh, immediately you didn't the two of you didn't need to say anything mm. you, you both called each other you were calling them out you did the brilliant uh, Real Madrid <laughs> Champions League final Instagram posts and yeah. it was like a, it was a bit of humour a bit of a giggle with it but it was it was good and it works it, it, look look where you are now yeah exactly that that was totally what we went for that, that's a couple of scousers that's still a little bad of me writing <laughs> stuff on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, Paddy seems to be cool with it, so, but, yeah. 
Oh, that's football fans for you. You can't, you can't try to fix them. Yeah. You just, you just let them, let them type away. Make them feel better. They're just football fans. We just, we get over that. Uh, look, so yeah, exactly. Lads, the new complement each other's game, and I, I immediately think to myself, I'd like to see you two just in like a Polaris grappling bout. bout. You know, that's. Like, I'm not taking away this fight, don't get me wrong, but I would love maybe in the future the two of you just to take away any strike and, and just have a grappling because you've seen it yourself. Paddy does like the flying triangle he's done a couple of times. He's got some nice little slick moves. You yourself have got the finishes. It, yeah. it makes for a great battle. Obviously, the fight starts standing, but gosh, it's exciting from that. For you as well to test yourself to make sure that you're on point, you're firing, you, you know what's coming and you know what to expect. Yeah, exactly. I think maybe... Um... You could kind of uh, look at it like it, maybe Paddy would have a bigger advantage in a pure uh, grappling fight because most of my grappling game is based around uh, doing ground and pound and elbows uh, until I get something. And uh, where Paddy is more loose and heavy on the, on his back and on the ground, ground in general. Where I want to have control at all times. Yeah, well, yeah, we don't want to give you wouldn't want to give each other an inch because the the pair of you have got such a kind of very smart game where you I like the way the, the both of you set your when it goes to the ground a pair of you kind of lead your opposition into some form of submission it's beautiful to watch it from, from my perspective I love that kind of thing I love watching the setup where the guys probably might know it's coming but he's like I've got no other option I maybe got to try to escape when it comes on but yeah it, <laughs> it's it, look we've all we've all been there we've all been white belts and we've all had that gorilla on top of us and we're like I just don't know what to do, and we're, we've all been yeah, there. No. It's horrible. <laughs> just gonna hold my hand, yeah, it, yeah, and then it went. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so when you're back, when you're back home, uh, I imagine there's quite a bit of uh, hype, you know, excitement, uh, your friends, family, and just in general. I imagine you're getting quite a lot of ch attention back home with this fight going on because getting this title you you know yourself it's quite a it's quite a remark a great feat to have it's a great thing having your record and you've seen what it's done for a lot of fighters yeah exactly but the the mma is not that well known in denmark hmm. as of yet uh i don't think it's it's really near the point that where it is in england and liverpool and uh in particular but uh for sure every one of my friends and family and co-workers they're, they're all hyped for the fight and uh, yeah so there's a lot of support coming from that corner because i i want to say scandinavia in general it, it's just on a it's on a great rise at the moment you know it's, it's quite a you know just cluster of countries with a great kind of group of, of fighters coming out of it it's on a little bit of a rise i i certainly feel it you know there's amateurs just turning pro who have exciting prospects uh mm. you know there, there's a lot of there's a lot out there I, i'm super excited for it myself because i like seeing new talent i like seeing kind of areas that were maybe untouched like look at france you know it's banned in france for a start so they have a tough time and there's a couple of guys that come out this woodwork but uh yeah it, it's it's good to see and uh, so would you like to maybe see uh, a bit more uh, kind of exposure than for just Scandinavian countries in a sense with like you know Cage Warriors themselves have gone up there would you like to see maybe see some more shows up there push pushing it a bit more yeah for sure and I believe that's the, the plan and goal as well and you see they just did a partnership with Margot Madsen in Denmark yeah coming with Cage Warriors Academy to to to, to Denmark yeah and and I believe that's kind of the thing they're going to do uh, all over Scandinavia to, to kind of ease into it again because yeah. they've, they've already been to Scandinavia and, and uh, Copenhagen as well but it didn't go, go that well because yeah the MMA scene wasn't really that big at the time a smarter way to build it up actually. it's yeah exactly just build it up you know there's there's no point in trying to sprint or try to fill out huge arena build it up slowly and you've obviously got a lot of guys at your gym who you yeah. train with and females I'm sure that are very talented and you're looking forward to getting them that exposure as well and that kind of platform to put them out themselves out there yeah exactly and especially the, the women have a hard time in the in Denmark getting fights because yeah that's that's just the women doing MMA over here uh, uh, hardly any at least 
Yeah, so uh, yeah, I've spoke to a few like uh, Paddy Kin uh, Kinzad as well. I've spoke to a few fighters up in Scandinavia, and they've uh, they, they've said it. But sometimes it's almost awkward because you, if you train with someone, there's a chance you're probably going to end up fighting them soon. Then you kind of get to that awkward yeah. fight where you know each other's skill set, so you're trying to think of something, but you don't want to go out your comfort zone. It's a bit, awkward. but again, that's that's the thing. This sport is so young, and that just shows it. We're in 2018. Yeah. And it's still growing. It's good though. It's good. It's promising. Like you, you know, you yourself, you can you can call yourself a, a kind of face for the sport in that way. You know, the way you're the way you're just going on a tear is the best way to put it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, now I, let's. Let, sorry. Go ahead. No. Go ahead, bro. No. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say. I, I didn't. You, yeah. You talk about Paddy and how you know <laughs> when you when you're talking, and obviously Paddy came out of that saying scousers don't get knocked out. And <laughs> uh, do you yourself when you when you see when you see Paddy Pimlet, you don't obviously talk about his weaknesses because that would give away a bit of your game plan. But the strengths that you've seen, is there something? Is there anything particular that you're kind of semi impressed by, but also you kind of feel like you are a superior in that field? Yeah, and in the head to head interview, we kind of talked about that mm, Paddy thinks he's better than me everywhere, and uh, I don't really agree with that. But uh, we, we, de we definitely, like, we have small niches we are better than each other in. Um, but, but as I see it, my game as a whole, uh, where I'm doing this more, much more tight uh, Jiu Jitsu, where focusing on the grab thing to get punches in, where Paddy is more like flying tri triangle. Uh, I, I think my game will will stand up well to that. And uh, yeah, so his strengths, in my opinion, is also kind of his weakness, where he's unpredictable and do crazy shit. But when you up against a guy with good fundamentals and knows to be prepared, it, it's yeah. not going to work. Yeah, it's 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 very it's very cautious in that sense where he, you. The high risk has a big, big, big reward, but then there's that kind. If yeah. it goes wrong, you end up with pie on your face. Is the best way to put it, uh, <laughs> or, a yeah, fist, exactly. or a fist, or a fist. Like, <laughs> yeah, and it, that's that's very true for his second flying triangle. It's it's a great highlight move, but uh, it's not going to work if if the guy you're facing is good. And let's just quickly touch on you as a person, though. So I mean, you obviously can't train 24-7. You have to have a bit of you time. What is it you like to do? What is it you like to have as a bit of a switch, switching your brain off kind of stuff? Well, I, I do a lot of things. But uh, here in the training cramp, it's like uh, wake up, go to training, then back to work and to training again. Um, and I, I bicycle uh, back and forth uh, around 40 kilometers a day. Um, so uh, I use my headphones and listen to a lot of audiobooks. That's uh, the, the best way I find to spend time and relax and kind of get my head out of the game and focus on something completely different. No, it's yeah, because you do have to switch off a little bit. You have to. You can't. You, you're mentally yeah. tired. You mentally drain yourself, and it it just ruins yourself. Uh, it, especially when you go to train, you're just not in it. You're not focused. Uh, so your audiobooks. Is there? Are you into any particular type of Autobiography, sci-fi, fiction. Are you are, are you a Harry Potter fan? What's what is it? <laughs> I, I did read the Harry Potter series. Um, I'm I'm uh, good for a lot of fantasy and uh, also like historical uh, historical fiction. Right now I'm reading some series on the uh, ancient Rome and uh, before that I just uh, finished the Viking saga for uh, Bernard Cornwall. Yeah. Uh, which was a yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah, the Vic, uh, the Vi uh, sorry, the, the Romans kind of did what the Germans did in the Second World War, where the Germans didn't learn from the Romans' mistake, where they just overstretched themselves. You know, they just went, they expanded yeah. too far, and that's the Romans got greedy as well. And they did the same thing. It's uh, I, I get, I, I like my history too, my friend. I'm a bit of a geek in that way, so I, I do like to study that stuff. And again, it's fascinating. You think that even through time, that people still can't learn it. You put your fingers in too many pies, you, you're gonna, you're not gonna get anything out of it. But look, mate, but I'm gonna let you yeah, get you going. You're gonna get burned. 
You are, you are indeed. Those the, the the Germans and the Romans have learned their lessons big time. But uh, let, yeah. before I let you go, my friend, uh, can you let everyone at home know how they can follow you on social media and how they can you know join you on your very good MMA career and uh, soon to be maybe world cage warriors champion journey. Yeah, thank you. So uh, at uh, Facebook and Instagram, it's at Soren Viking. Uh, that name on Twitter was apparently taken, so that uh, on Twitter I'm uh, at True Viking Back. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I should have been faster on Twitter. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So Soren Viking and True Viking Back. Happy days. Okay, um, let's do your sponsors, yeah. bro. How do you, you must? I know you've recently. I recently saw a post about Feel Supreme. So you got CBD oil, CBD oil kicking in, yeah. helping you out. So who else is there helping you out, man? Yeah, so they're the very latest, latest on the train, Feel Supreme. Uh, my clothes are from uh, Pride or Die. Uh, all my equipment comes from Nippon Sport. And, uh, and CSA obviously is helping a lot with the training, coaching. Uh, all new Tomino, some additional supplements. So yeah, that's about it. Nice, bro. And finally, give a shout out, like you say, to training partners, coaches, or even just people in general that help you in the fight camp. Because sometimes not just the coaches, there might be friends that, you know, call you up and make you laugh and give you, or they pull pranks on you. People like that, they're great in life. So give them a mention, my man. Give them a bit of time. Yes, it's going to be long if I have to call out every every guy in the gym. But CS80Go uh, is, is my gym, and everyone there is with me a lot up until the fight, supporting, coming over, and watching the fight live. Gas um, main coach. Uh, and we just we, we had uh, Patrick Petilla from uh, Finland flew in and be Patty for a week. Uh, oh, nice! Dancing. So the, thank you, thank you so much, Patrick. Uh, also, friends, family also coming over to to Liverpool watching the fight, and my wife Michelle, who's kind of been uh, funding all this uh, <laughs> in a very real way by by actually going to work uh, and and paying our bills. So thank you, Michelle. Oh, that's a good one. Save the best to last. That's the one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Look, have a great final fight camp, last few weeks of fight camp. Enjoy yourself at Cage Warriors in Liverpool. It's going to be, as you know, the atmosphere, it's pretty insane. It's going to be an, an experience, yeah. my friend. So just absorb it all, enjoy it all, and have a great time, all right? Thank you, sir. I will.